Hi. We have just announced our uh, competency mapping certification program. Somebody asked me the other day, is competency mapping still relevant today? Most people seem to be already aware of what is competency mapping. My answer to that question is, yes, it is very relevant. Although the term competency has begun to be used almost for the last 50 years, ever since David McClelland wrote that article, Testing for Competence Rather Than Intelligence, in 1973, and about 10 years later, a lot of work has been done on the competent manager and also competence is required for performing various jobs. Unfortunately, it has not found its way in the curricula of either the B schools or HRM schools or personal management departments and many others. In spite of the fact that we have over 50 years of knowledge on skills that are required, competencies that are required to perform jobs well. The science of competency mapping has not percolated into the curricula. It is only some select organizations with uh, people who are interested in HR who go through certificate programs like the ones which are offered by us and are able to identify competencies required to perform a job and use it for recruitment, promotions and identifying developmental needs and building leadership bench or planning careers of individuals and so on. There are many applications. Let me clarify a few things. First of all, what is competency mapping? Competency mapping is nothing but the process of identifying knowledge, attitudes, skills, values, traits and any other thing conceptually, technically, managerially, behaviorally required to perform a given job well. There is a science of identifying competencies. The competency consists of various components. There is something like indicators of competencies. When you know for any job the tasks that are required to be performed, and the knowledge, attitude, skills, values, etc. required to perform that task well. Of course, there is no guarantee that if you have the knowledge, attitude, skills, you will perform that well, but still you will have to identify what are the conditions that will facilitate you to perform well and not perform well and include it in your repertoire of performance management assessment systems and so on. But the process of identifying the knowledge, attitude, skills, etc. required to perform a job well is what is competency mapping. At the end of the competency mapping, for any given job or for a given function or for a profession or even for an organization, you will have a set of, you would have identified a set of critical knowledge, skills, attitudes, values and other kind forms of qualities that are required to make success out of that individual, department, profession or organization. If it is an organization, you will have an enormous list of competencies after doing competency mapping for all the critical roles of that organization. If it is a profession, it could cut across various organizations. And then you will again have a list of competencies like in the HR profession, Dave Ulrich from the University of Michigan has been doing a lot of work for almost for the last 30 and odd years and every few years he keeps revising the competencies on the basis of global research and he has written books on it. So HR profession itself is filled with literature on the competencies that are required to be a successful uh, HR manager, HR officer or a CHRO and things like that. So competency mapping is not only for HR, I think quite often people misunderstand this. It is for all. Assume that you are planning a startup. You have already identified the product. You have already identified the market. You have to look for some 
uh, people who can finance it and so on. So all those who are thinking of starting startups need to have a set of competencies. These competencies may include conceptual competencies, market competencies, financial competencies and so on. So one can identify a group of uh, people who are interested in startups, who have already started the, who have made good success out of the startups and after interviewing them can come up with a list of things that are required, competencies that are required to design, implement and operate a startup successfully. These competencies may deal with a variety of fields, entrepreneurial competencies, financial capabilities, marketing capabilities, product design capabilities, human relations competencies, conceptual competencies, uh, legal kind of competencies that are required to the knowledge of all the laws that are there, knowledge of all the opportunities that are there, competencies dealing with various agencies you have to deal with and so on and so forth. So if you are a competency mapper, you will know, totally understand the process of mapping these competencies. And in fact, I think you can write a book, a small book on competencies required for a startup. You can write a book on competencies required for a salesperson or an insurance agent or a branch manager of a bank or a branch manager of an insurance company. Any role, howsoever small or big is, you can pick up that particular role and the competency mapping certification teaches you what are all the things that you need to do to come up with a list of competencies that are required. Now there is a science, there are a set of questions that we ask. There are also, I think, books that are available from TVRLS. We have a competency education kit, which used to consist of about four volumes. Now we have a condensed kit of all the four volumes put into one volume and make it available for it. So in the certificate program, we teach people all these things. We start with identifying competencies of people, for example, required to uh, uh, do research in a hospital, what are the competencies? Or for a hospital administrator, what are the competencies? Or a head of the department of a college or a, a, a person uh, who is a CXO of any function in a particular kind of company. So you pick up a function, a role and so on and then we help you to identify, first define competency, then identify the knowledge, attitudes, skills that are required by interviewing people uh, we also teach a few other methods like using observation, using task analysis and things of that kind. At the end of this program, you are able to list given any job or a function or a small organization. You have a total process familiarization of how to identify competencies and establish competency models. You will have a list of competencies. Uh, and you would have followed this, but the process of identifying these competencies and so on. So knowledge of competency mapping is uh, is very definite kind of a knowledge, solid knowledge. It is scientific, and once you have this science, you are able to use the competency models that you have developed, or competency list that you have developed for recruiting purposes, for redesigning the organization, for identifying if. Uh, any person whom you want to transfer fits into a role to which you are being transferred because you have a competency list that is available for redesigning organizations, for uh, enlarging roles, for uh, uh, even if you decide to shrink the roles, what are some of the things which are critical for that particular role and so on. For appraising performance, performance of people who are performing those roles and uh, identifying developmental needs and building the capabilities for the future. So friends, there are many uh, advantages of knowing competency mapping. And please remember, this is not, this science is not meant only for HR people or management people. Any person who is interested, even if you are a technical person, an IT person, an engineer, uh, or a designer, whatever is, or a medical person, it's good for you to know uh, the meaning of a competency, the process of identifying competencies and the process of using competencies. Because today everyone, irrespective of the profession that is occupying a managerial or organizational role, 
is required to be sensitive to the uh, competencies or capabilities that are required to perform the role. If you are uh, aware of it, you will be able to scientifically and I think more even intuitively manage whatever organizations or whatever roles or whatever departments you are supposed to uh, deal with. So I hope you will uh, make use of uh, either a certificate program like the one which we offer or go through literature on competency. There is plenty of literature you can go through uh, Google and then uh, go to the internet and there are also I think uh, YouTube videos uh, some of which were uh, put out uh, by me on competency mapping. So it's a good idea to go through this and equip yourself and become if not a specialist at least a person who is familiar with the idea of competency mapping. All the best from TVRLS.